Okay. Okay. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Shafis, coordinator of professional and educational activities subcommittee, IEEE Power and Energy Society Young Professionals. This webinar is organized by IEEE Power and Energy Society Young Professionals. Today, our respected uh, speaker is Dr. Benas Papari. Dr. Benas Papari is an assistant professor in marine engineering technology at Texas A&M Galveston. She has 12 years experience in industry and academia, focusing on power system controls with an emphasis on modeling, analysis, planning, and optimization. Today, she will talk about advanced distribution management system for all electric uh, ships. Please welcome Dr. Benas Babari for further discussion on the topic. I appreciate Shaw for your uh, presentation about my background. Thank you so much. And I appreciate for uh, giving this opportunity for the presenting some part of my uh, research focus for today for the audience. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Papari uh, from the Texas A&M University uh, at the Marine Engineering Technology Department. Today, I'm going to uh, present a part of my research, uh, not all of it, but part of the, my research focus for the <clears throat> my uh, area that I've been uh, involved as the advanced distribution management system for the all electric ships. Uh, as you can uh, understand it from the topic, uh, there is uh, lots of the uh, power distribution system uh, uh, that you can focus on terrestrial or electric ships. And uh, I have a both background in, uh, from uh, those platforms, uh, but focus of today would be the uh, management, control and management systems for all electric ships. As an outline, I'm going to go through the motivation of the why I basically choose this area and going deep for the research on it. Then uh, give a, a brief uh, introduction about the advanced distribution management system for the small grid or even electric ships generally and distributed power and energy management, energy and system modeling for the real time evaluation and energy management, power management, specifically each layer, and active thermal and fault relay control. And at the end, I'm going to uh, present uh, some sort of the metrics analysis, how we can analyze the uh, air control system performance. As a motivation, I can say that uh, all electric ships or a smart grid or even a smart cities during the last decade focused by department of energy office of naval research or industry uh, or uh, national science foundation to develop some uh, other aspect that not necessarily focus for the last decades for instance the efficiency or system reliability and resiliency is the sectors that their this agency focus on it recently and wants to uh, wants us to more focus on developing some methodology technology wise uh, to enhance the system efficiency in the system level control system how we can develop a methodology or the system to offer the next generation of the ship system as an example as you can see it in from the uh, graph from now and near future or in a far future the office of naval research have uh, in basically mission uh, to offering the new generation of their ship for their application with the uh, in a medium voltage direct current level of 6 kilovolt DC. As you can see that uh, in a real world, we usually face with the AC uh, grid, but ship system as a DC 
I landed grid on the top of ocean have a specific constraint. So enhancement of such system and control system or management system for this application would be a little, uh, a little different with the regular network that we face with it day by day. And also ability to engage the pulse power weapon and sensor load is another uh, uh, point that they really want to have a next generation of chief system with the better resiliency, reliability. Better it means that improving it with the current generation ship that they have. So we need the control and management system to increase basically power electronic penetration and also with the high technology and also manage it perfectly to be able to distinguish it with the current generation of ship. So uh, if I'm going to explain as a baseline of the ship system from the modeling point of view and beside the modeling, all control and management layers on top of this modeling, I can say that as you can see it in this graph, you see uh, as an example, four zone ship power system, which is in the uh, bottom line and we designed the control and management system on top of this um, model to interact with the component in the model and then provide us the uh, full image of the ship system and control layer associated with this application. As you can see, we have uh, three different control layer, power management as a PM, energy management on top of that, in a green line, a EM, and uh, energy uh, forecasting, which is the, uh, we call it demand forecasting, and as a uh, purple color on the top of all layers. And what exactly this graph shows us that different component in the model, in the baseline model at four zone ship system, different component connected to the power management, energy management, and demand forecasting control and management layer separately to would be able to distributedly control all of these component in the ship system and provide more reliability and resiliency compared with the current and well-known control management system, which is centralized or basically semi-decentralized, uh, but not distributed control. And it's the beauty of the art that uh, we can see that as a state of our distributed control and management system offer more reliability for the whole system, for the ship system to fulfill their mission. And uh, is the point that I'm going to go through it. Each control layer, power management, energy management, forecasting layer, or metametrics management of control system, at the end of the day, provide us one distinguished control management on top of each component, as well as communication between those control agents to provide us the unique uh, management system for the next generation of the ship for the uh, Navy application. So in a system level, uh, modeling is important. What exactly you model and how you define and design the control and management system for this model. As you can see, this graph is the uh, four zone ship system model with the different component, which is uh, uh, distinguishing the different color, blue, red, green, to uh, basically divide the ship system to four zone and also uh, control and manage the load partially to provide more resiliency at the end of the day. This model, as you can see, include three main generator, PGM in a blue, 
with the 36 megawatt and two auxiliary P uh, power generation module or PGM and the five megawatt. And PCM module at a 12 kb or over the one kilowatt uh, with the energy storages. Also, we have a laser, we have a zonal load in each zone and which is the defined by could be laser, emergency rail gun, zonal service load for the hotel or what uh, uh, include in this category. And modeling it in a uh, real time uh, digital simulator like Opalarty, it was a challenging uh, since we have uh, in reality lots of the non-ideal component and make us to think about how we can make our model more mature in a real-time application when we are going to put all of these control layers in a real time on top of this model how we can basically bake our model to make more mature model close to reality model that we face with it on the top of sheet and we leverage OpalRT uh, and also we have in, a, in a RTDS as a, another real-time digital simulator to with the internal uh, group control to provide us the more real uh, model for our experiment, for testing our control system on it. And the, com and the communication uh, between the controller in this model and uh, external controller would be UDP that we leverage it when it is the best option for uh, our model. In a deep, in a component wise, if I try to explain how we leverage the OpalRT uh, block, uh, basically library block that we leverage it for our modeling, I can mention in the power generation module or PGMs as a blue, we leverage the ideal DC voltage source with the internal group resistance. And uh, PCM, <clears throat> that you can see that it was the DC-DC transformer with the internal group resistance or even um, uh, load. We had the uh, control current source used to link the reference power value. All of these components at the all blue, red or green or yellow block that you saw in the previous slide indeed have a specific model you can see it here and based on the data that we get it from the uh, office of naval research library esrdc uh, we uh, developed this model in the opal rt uh, one of the digital real-time simulator to be able to offer the close model to the reality based on the real data that we get as you can see it after the modeling, the basically the focus would be how we would be able to implement and uh, instantiate all of the control layer that you uh, see it in the previous slides and we develop it as a different power management control layer, energy management control layer, or even the forecasting layer, how we can develop it in a real time. I can say that our group have, uh, which I was uh, one of them, provide a brilliant work to associate all of the different control layers together and leveraging a different type of controllers. And in a real time, run the code to be able to wholly uh, instantiate the control and management system for ship system. As you can see in the picture that is in front of you, model, real-time model that we develop it, run it in the OpalRT. And then OpalRT model through the communication connected to the controller that we already deployed the code, control and management code on a specific one. And then around 30 controllers associated and work with each other to would be able to communicate with each other at the end of the day 
fulfill the mission of ship system that running that model through the OPLRT. And all of these uh, hardware instantiation that you can see in the picture include the OPLRT model, controller, takes a national instrument controller that we leverage in, we call it NIRIO or CRIO or MyRIO or SPRIO, help us to be able to run our management system, control management system, distributedly over them. And by communicating toward each other, each controller toward the other one, we're controlling the power electronic apparatus and the components that we had in our model in real time. And I can say that a scale of these hardware control hardware instantiation is really important. And we had, a, fortunately, we had the opportunity to would be able to fully uh, implement what exactly we develop in the theory, implement it in a real time application for the ship system. In detail, if I want to explain each part of this controller dedicated to which power energy management or forecasting control layer, I can go in a day of explain, explain to you that how it works and what type of methodology we leverage to would be able to uh, fulfill this mission. As in the first part, as you can see in the as a first step, we started with the energy management layer in the normal operation mode of the ship system. As you can see it in the left side of this picture, real-time system model in the below of all blocks need to communicate and manage by different control layer, power management, energy management, energy management in engage mode, and mission control engage mode, and uh, fulfill it with the metrics even. The blue block that you can see energy management for the efficiency, we call it. We leverage the distributed crew search algorithm as a, one of the uh, new uh, optimization method to optimize that efficiency of the power generation module for our ship system. We had the three main power generation module and two auxiliary, and all of them need to optimize for the efficiency point of view to would be able to provide more reliability and resiliency and uh, distributedly with the, another controller who controlled another generation module, power generation module, to offer the better and optimum point of the power or energy for the uh, ship system, our system. What exactly we focus on it, it was a difficulty uh, we faced with it. It was that the fuel efficiency of the power generation module, it was the nonlinear curve. And we need the methodology to would be able to survive in the real-time application, as well as shows that the convergence uh, to for this application. As you can see, the crew search algorithm and modified crew search algorithm that we develop, it was the best fit for this uh, issue with the non-linearity that we had in the fuel efficiency of the power generator module. And you can see that we divided the five generator module as a five different agent. You can see five different blood to communicate with each other and reach to the optimum point from the power point, power sharing. And then from S1 to S5, then import the set point that we gave it, you exported the power management layer, the management layer that is the below on uh, the uh, hierarchical control management system. These modified crew search algorithm help us to be able to control and provide better convergence for the reaching to optimum point of the efficiency for the ship system compared with the regular linear algorithm that usually in the uh, usual uh, network 
they using it but in a ship system as a one island dc grid on the top of ocean we really need some sort of methodology to fulfill the mission one of them is the nonlinear pivot it is a really important and the dcsa uh, shows us that very well defined and structurally fit to the real time application such this application after that point, we need to think about how we can provide and develop the energy management control system from the engagement when the ship system go to the battle mode. Then we leverage the distributed model productive control for with the ADMM when we have the engagement of energy storages to need to basically uh, fulfill the need of the all of distributed control communicate with each other and to see that how we can leverage the energy storage in the ship system as fast as is possible for the system when the ship system go through the battle mode go through the engage mode and after the testing this methodology in real time we found that the distributed model product control with ADMM also shows the best feed for the R application and shows that about a millisecond, 150 millisecond action, which we needed in the real time control management system for the ship system in engage mode. And in PC calculation, we did it to make a pre-calculation stage. After that, ADMMM three stage repeat until the criterion is met. We define the constraint for it. So we update in each cycle 150 millisecond the energy management control system to that okay is the best optimum point for the uh, operation of the normal and safe operation of the ship system. Those methodology that we leverage in the energy management layer, it was the, at that point, it was really and truly uh, best optimum point that we get it for the real time application and time wise, which is really important for the Navy application system. Uh, they shows the uh, best fit for our system. Another layer after the focus in energy management second for the efficiency was the power management layer. As I said that we had the five generator, three main generator and two auxiliary that component wise, they been dual winding machine that we need to define 10 controllers distributedly on top of each uh, generator to be able to manage distributed those generators. So in our methodology, we defined it to define the adaptive group control uh, running the controller distributedly, as you can see in the uh, flow chart uh, in a diagram, and to simultaneously would be able to control the voltage and current for the generator and for the 10 controllers then communicate with each other to would be able to provide us the enough uh, reliability and resiliency from the power, man power management and control system for the ship system. What exactly we did in this methodology in the part of the work, we combined the model reference adaptive control for the distributed ad <coughs> adaptive distribution management system. And based on these, we fulfill the power management and energy management control layer for the ship system to provide us the enough uh, reliability and uh, <clears throat> control uh, free point to would be able to turn it in the ship system how 
we can push the edge of the control and management system to the high edge of the technology from the uh, distributed scheme. Another, another aspect that also come toward this topic, it would be the thermal management, control and management. We also check and enhance some uh, control layer, like a sequence-based control layer for the power electronic converter that we had in the uh, ship system to make sure that all of these models that we run it and the real time through the OPLRT would be able to operate safely and uh, in this part of work, we focus on the sequence-based two-level power converter, as an example. And like the control action guarantee the minimum error of the desired control variable. So far, we define the different control layer in the real time. And the beauty of this work and study was that all of these methodology algorithms and control system fully deploy in a real time on the controller who distributely communicate to each other and provide the optimum point of the operation for the ship system in a normal operation or in a battle mode of operation. But um, as you can see, still there is a lot of the room for improving this methodology and control methodology in, in, in a real time application. As an example, we, uh, for the thermal control, active thermal control uh, methodology that we offer for improving the system efficiency and also reliability, the single horizon prediction is used. But there is a, some uh, works that we need to focus on the more than one time horizon. What about the two time horizon or instead of single horizon with the two or three time horizon? So it's still this part of work, we are working on it to developing more, uh, more efficient control system for these uh, ship system as a next generation of the uh, Navy ship system. At the uh, end, I can say to you that after defining the control system uh, for the real-time model of the ship system, we need some sort of analysis to would be able to analyze each control layer that we define it properly to see that how much they are fulfill uh, they are fulfill, basically they are matching with the uh, need of the ship system for the next generation as a next generation not the current version that we have so we come up with the solution that we need the metrics analysis and to would be able to uh, to would be able to testing the performance of each management and control layer as you can see it in this picture the meta metrics module in the right size of this get the data of the real time model of the ship system also getting the data uh, from the each control layer that communicate with the model component and then analyzing that our controls management layers how per operate and also how is um, they can improve this controllability for the fulfilling the mission of the ship it was a little hard at the beginning because each control layer need to distribute and communicate it with the top layer. Power management layer need to communicate it with the energy management layer, energy management layer, forecasting layer, and the hierarchical control uh, 
architecture. And also all of them communicate with the modeling. At the beginning, it may, it may uh, seem that a little uh, mess through this picture, but the good point of this architecture for the ship system, it would be the distributed scheme. Each control, regardless of communicating with the neighboring control agent, also communicating with the model and in time horizon, in a defined time horizon, they updating their uh, set point and also updating the metametric module to analyze their performance in a specific layer at the end of the uh, day trying to calculate that the performance total performance of the control system for the ship system to to say the uh, human interface that has a uh, basically first response to as a mission for the ship system how this control system work and also grade them as you can see in this picture i try to for the fuel consumption basically make some sort of the uh, metric evaluation for the control system and to see that in a normal operation mode how we can basically classy and classify the or uh, distinguish the performance of the control system and as you can see that with without control as a blue or no control a uh, with control or no control the with control the blue graph shows the lower value which for us it shows that when we have a distributed control on the top of the model, ship model, ship system model, we shows the metametric evaluation shows that shows the all of these methodology that we leverage it for the air control system get the better performance. And for fuel consumption, as a one of the metrics that we trying to calculate it, how the energy management layer provide us the optimal fuel efficiency of the ship system in a real time. And metametric evaluation shows us that, okay, the control system that we leverage it for the real time application of shows the proper performance and give us better picture. Also, we evaluate another metrics uh, for, uh, for the different weightening pattern to for the, in a different even stage of the ex experiment. Sometimes we have a normal operation mode. Sometimes we had a, a different operation mode uh, for the ship system as an engagement or component by component. You have uh, some sort of the... Uh, vital load or non-vital load that each component responsible for it depend on the priority that we define for the component such component like a load the optimization algorithm and optimization procedure uh, priority will be different so metametrics evaluation responsibility is to provide that categorize all of these differences and prioritize them then update the control layers on top of each other that based on the current operation mode what would be the priority and what you need to operate on it to make the ship system operation as the best optimum point that you can find and be expecting and desire for the system it was the pretty much about the what exactly so far uh, develop and enhance for the navy ship system or other type of the uh, industrial ship systems and uh, as a control uh, focus and i would really uh, would be happy to uh, and open to the comment questions at this point there is still lots of the work that recently i focus on it as a one of them is the CQ control and power management a layer for the ship system, electric ship system. 
uh, as you may know that the cyber security is one of the main concern that we had it in uh, even terrestrial grid in a ship system and uh, recently I uh, developed some sort of the metrics analysis that how we can evaluate at the beginning the current control and management system for a ship system, how we can evaluate the security of this control system and how we enhance, how we would be able to enhance them from cyber physical security in a case that one of these distribution, uh, distributed control management uh, agent for um, attack by the malware or uh, not even attack uh, how we can secure our control system for the ship system uh, uh, for the point that some part of this controller need to go to the maintenance not necessarily uh, we have to have an attack to see that there is a need for the security of the control system. Sometimes we need a maintenance or we need even fault even the, each controller, how we can fulfill the mission regard with respect to the attack maintenance need or how we can increase the security of the management system, control and advanced control and management system for the ship in a case that uh, we face with the unsecure data. And also you can see another uh, point that is really important, how you can improve the communication point of uh, uh, this platform. As you can see, it, model need to communicate with the controllers, controller communicate need to each other and secure the communication portal from this picture is really important. Appreciate for your uh, <clears throat> patient and I'm open to any question and comment if you have. Uh, I have a question uh, about the uh, uh, sequence-based control. Sure. Yeah, so can you tell us, uh, talk about it? Yeah, for the sequence-based control, uh, we leverage it for the thermal aspect of the ship system. Uh, since uh, we testing the several component, but we need the methodology to show that the action fast. Why? Because we facing and we leveraging the control for the power electronic apparatus which acting super fast when i'm talking about fast range of microsecond i'm talking about so the power converter that we need to as a one of the power electronic apparatus we need to basically control and manage need the specific sequence based control uh, to with the modification to would be able to fulfill the need of the time action and um and made some other um, power electronic apparatus shows that the um, uh, basically the time another time horizon for the control action. But for the power electronic apparatus, power converter that we had in the ship system mobile, basically sequence based control that we develop it and a little enhance it by modification and then it deploy the code for the power converter shows us the really, really best match for the thermal uh, measurement and uh, uh, measurement of the power control uh, converter. And uh, but still I'm saying that the this methodology, sequence-based control that we leverage it for the power counter, power converter, it was deployed for the single horizon. What about the two or three horizon time horizon after that point we still work on it and trying to figure it out how we can mix the, another control methodology maybe the sequence based control to provide us more uh, 
faster, you know, faster action time horizon, and which is really, really required for some of the power electronic apparatus. Uh, thank you for the answer. I have two more questions. And the one is about uh, the software for control. I mean, like uh, normally it's uh, SCADA and PLC. So what kind of software you can use? It's a really good question and great question. Uh, the controller that we leverage for this platform uh, and framework, we use the national instrument controller, different type of SBRIO, MRAM, NIRIO, or the CBRIO. And um, the language that uh, <coughs> we have through basically inserted in the national instrument controller is the lab view. All of the control system need to, in a whatever software, at the beginning we wrote it we have to convert it to the lab view and then deploy it in the hardware the controller national instrument controller to would be able to understand well for the platform i understand that uh, sometimes for the <clears throat> other type of the uh, control system SCADA, they have a c plus plus but all of this code that we write it in the lab view is convertible the other type of C++ or software that is matched with the other uh, controllers, hardware. Uh, thank you very much. If other people are questioning, so they will uh, write the comments. But sure. if there's no comments, so I will ask my questions. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and what about like, uh, you talk about the single horizon prediction is used. So can you tell about this? Yeah, for the single horizon, because you can see that uh, every switching have uh, every switching steps have uh, two uh, states, and when we have uh, three switching steps, then we have to basically find the optimal point of this switching to optimize the thermal concept of the power converter by uh, I understand it that imagine that we have a three switching steps at the end of the day we face with the two power three it is the eight states that we need to consider in our control vision uh, fortunately we prove it for the control sequence based control work perfectly for the one step at the first step but for the three step converter uh, switching, uh, still we need to develop in the very um, well-defined control system to would be able to provide us the optimum operation mode of the converter switching for the three phase. Ah, thank you. And uh, one other question is about the battery, battery storage. So about the capacity, like you are using the batteries. So what about their capacities and uh, what type of batteries you are using? Actually, the detail that uh, uh, that we're using for this application, because if data comes from the ESRDC and the energy storage of this modeling, uh, it was the ideal uh, model. And for the security, I understand that they cannot release the specific type and you know and a brand that they make it and. All of this modeling for energy storage come from the ESRC library, based on the Office of Naval Research, as a <clears throat> sanitized data that we can leverage for the research. There is a, uh, some sort of the uh, even different with the scale even compared with the reality. But what exactly we leverage for the uh, our modeling uh, for zone ship system, it would be around 25 uh, megawatt uh, uh, capability that, that would be that kilowatt hour to provide us the enough resiliency in a battle mode for the uh, uh, power management uh, layer in a case of that the ship from the operation normal operation mode jumping toward the engagement mode when we have a railgun and laser but data, for instance, that we had in a uh, power management so that that ship system capacity for the generator point of view is the 100 megawatt 
three main generators, each one of them, <clears throat> you know, uh, 30 megawatt or 36 megawatt, and then two auxiliary as a, uh, each one of them, two auxiliary, five megawatt. But all of this number is the sanitized data number that is not uh, basically a scaled data is not necessarily what in a reality we have and i understand it because of the security they are not going to share the exact capacity uh, all right thank you very much and uh, thank you for the answers i'm checking comments but i think there's no questions from audience so uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you very much, Dr. Behnaz Papari, for your time and sharing your knowledge with us. It was very fruitful you know, session and discussion, and we learned a lot about uh, ships and their system. And uh, that was really very nice and amazing, and I'm very thankful to you for giving us time today. Thank and, you so uh, much for this opportunity, and I appreciate all of the audience. Thank you. Yeah, I know we have just... Uh, uh, we have many more uh, events in the future, like we are all set to roll out the red carpet for the Powering, Powering the Future Summit 2021, the IEEE Power Energy Society Young Professionals Global Conference. Uh, we bring uh, to you the perfect immigration of technology, learning, and networking. Uh, browse yourself to experience one the biggest event of the year on 23rd, uh, 24th, and 30th, and 31st October. Uh, the link to register to become ambassador uh, will be put on the comment section for the audience who are interested, they can join us. And I will play the video now so you can see. Thank you. You're welcome.